I, I put up a clip of a Iraqi astronomer uh, who was basically arguing that no, the Earth is absolutely flat because it says so in the Quran, blah blah blah. So I put this up. No, no, no. Edit, I didn't editorialize anything. I just put up the clip. Uh, a scientist, a fellow evolutionary scientist from uh, California, wrote to me. I mean, publicly on the thread. To paraphrase her sentiment, she was saying, well, I mean, why are you putting this up? Why are you making fun of these marginalized people? Why are you doing this? So her instinct, her reflex was not to say, how could a fellow scientist actually spew such nonsense? She was upset at me for pointing out his nonsense. And we need to kind of get past this obstacle. Otherwise, I think it's going to be a very, very nasty battle. Right. I mean, and who, what, what bothers me about this is that you can be, you can have said, you know, the Shahada or, you know, you can have called yourself a Muslim yesterday. Right. And you are now, you are now someone who can speak for Islam. Right. right. Meanwhile, if you are criticizing Islam, <laughs> you have to be all, you have to be a scholar, you have to have a yes. PhD yes. who speaks fluent Arabic, who is ethnically, you know, yes. like dark or brown and all these things. I mean, and these politics of what, what makes an authentic critic. Right. Versus a non-authentic. I mean, and, and you'll find that there is no such thing as an authentic critic right. of Islam. Well, I'll tell you a great, a great anecdote on exactly that point. So I've debated with uh, Muslims and non-Muslims alike about various things. And so let's say I'll point to, do you know who Yusuf al Qaradawi is? Do you know? Do you know yeah. that? So he is a one of the uh, preeminent Sunni Islamic scholars. I mean, he has about as clean a pedigree of an Islamic scholar as you can have. I mean, he's, I think, now in his 80s. He's the spiritual leader of the Muslim Brotherhood. I think he originally comes from Al-Azhar University in, in Cairo. I mean, he's the man, okay? Mm -hmm. Guess when I quote something by him or by uh, Al-Baghdadi, the so-called Caliph of ISIS who has a PhD in Islamic studies. Guess what people will say about these two guys? They're not real Muslims. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, right? Their friend, Ahmad, who goes drinking with them and parties and who's a very nice Muslim, that's the true Muslim. But right. Sheikh Yusuf al Qardawi or Caliph uh, of ISIS with a PhD in Islamic studies, they just don't understand. They're fake Muslims. Well, so, I, this is so destructive, right? Because right. These, these politics of, of you have to be deemed to be authentic right. and who who is the one that's deciding who who is or isn't authentic right, right? i mean that there's a certain media type person like elite i don't want to say elite that's a weird word but but there are a certain group of people who get to decide who is or isn't authentic who does or doesn't count as you know uh, somebody who who can speak for islam speak for muslims or speak against islam and against muslims and it's a weird marriage between and you've talked about this many times about post postmodernism and cultural relativism and moral relativism. So it's a strange marriage between postmodernism and those the relativisms that go along with it, right. and this this desire to legitimately protect what they feel is an embattled, a besieged minority. Right. And it becomes a very toxic thing. And and what I want to talk about and what I have been talking about is that it's harmful to Muslims. It's harmful right. to progress because no one is allowed to to speak about you know the harms that they have and it really is extremists who change the dialogue right so it is the people who will point out the worst in what is happening that gets people to pay attention to, to a trend overall right? right um so we have to give these voices some some credibility we have to be able to listen to them uh, and that includes both extremist islam uh, islamic you know scholars we have to look at them and say there are people who are thinking like this right. and they have some legitimacy in the text and we have to talk about that as a, as a real thing rather than just dismissing it, which is what's happening. It's just being dismissed. Well, I think it's because they, the reality is that they can't provide counterpoints to something that you offer. And so they have to literally attack the messenger, right? I mean, uh, mm -hmm. the idea is uh, the way you determine who is an authentic voice for Islam is whether the person who is speaking is saying things that we can test their veracity, right? I mean, that's... In, in, a, in a reasonable de debate, that's what determines whether what you're saying makes sense or not. So when Ben Affleck attacks uh, Sam Harris, you know, are you the guy who speaks for Muslims? I mean, nobody said that he's the guy who speaks for Muslims. But if he makes a verifiable point, which can either be proven to be false or true, 
then he's contributed to the debate. But if you don't have the capacity or are, 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 are unwilling to navigate through the arguments, then you say, well, who are you, Sam Harris? You're some California white boy. How dare you? Right? So I think that's, that's the reason, right? It's, you, you have to, if you like, behead figuratively the messenger uh, because if the message gets out, then you lose the debate, right? And, right. and those are, just, I mean, they're dirty politics, right. right? And we've seen the way Majid, what Majid is being called, and he's a Muslim, right? And he's being called porch monkey, lapdog. And he doesn't things. even, he doesn't identify himself as an ex-Muslim, right? He identifies himself as somebody who is still within the faith, correct? Right. He is a, he is a believer, as far as, as far as I know, and he identifies himself right. as a believer. And, I mean, if he can't speak for Muslims, and he who can't... Can? With his pedigree, exactly. What it means is that um, Islam stays the way it is because we have this vision of what we feel Islam is in our minds and that is the only, and people who are saying exactly that are the people that are going to be supported and anyone that says anything else is not going to be supported. So what happens is that there's no progress, there's no change. You know, to some extent you have to be able to look at, you know, what's happening in your own communities, the harm to, to move forward. And... Western communities can do that to their own, and that's why they can progress. And so you're kind of dooming, you know, you're kind of dooming these Absolutely. Muslim communities to 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 just this this place Being where they static. can't move forward, right? Come, exactly. And it's 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 quite tragic. Uh, 